When I do Oasis features, most of the time I focus on the glory days in the 1990s. But today I want to look at one of my favourite songs from a very underrated album in their second phase in the noughties, Standing on the Shoulder of Giants. Released in 2000, this album had a very different sound and very different songs, but one of the highlights for me was always the final song, track 10, Roll It Over. And this is, in my opinion, one of the tracks from this era that has really stood the test of time. This is actually one of the Oasis tunes that Liam Gallagher played at Nebworth and elsewhere multiple times this year. So today, I wanted to break down the few short lines of lyrics there are in this song and give my own personal interpretation of what I think this song might have actually meant to the man who wrote it, Noel Gallagher. But I want to start with the title itself, Roll It. This little phrase crops up all over the place in British rock and roll, but what does it mean? Roll what? To get the answer for this, we need to go right the way back to the Beatles. Starting with the first solo George Harrison album, All Things Must Pass, released in 1970. The first track on the album was a co-write between George Harrison and Bob Dylan, and it contains the Harrison penned line, let me know you, let me show you, let me roll it to you. The song is a really sweet to and fro between George and Bob, with George writing the verses, basically expressing his wish to be better friends with Dylan, and Dylan writing the choruses saying yes and welcoming him in. I don't know specifically what he meant, but it might have meant, let me roll a joint for you. But the Beatles' connection to the phrase roll it doesn't end there. Let's move forward a year to 1971. After the breakup of the Beatles, John Lennon and Paul McCartney fell out very publicly and began writing negative songs about each other. Paul blamed John for the breakup of the Beatles and had begun to grow increasingly frustrated with what he saw as John and Yoko preaching at the public through the press. In an interview with Playboy, McCartney said, John had been doing a lot of preaching and it got up my nose a little bit. In one song I wrote, too many people preaching practices and you took your lucky break and broke it in two. That song was called Too Many People and it featured on Paul McCartney's 1971 album, Ram. John Lennon heard the song very much got the message and was not impressed. And he retaliated against Paul with a much more direct and much angrier song on his album Imagine, released later that same year in 1971. In a song called How Do You Sleep, John repeatedly attacks Paul using the titles of his own songs down through the years, including Paul's Beatles songs and his solo songs. It was two years later in 1973, when Paul released what many people saw as a makeup song for John Lennon. On his album, Band on the Run, he released a song called Let Me Roll It. The song was written using John Lennon style guitar riffs and recorded using the John Lennon vocal echo. And it contains the line, I can't tell you how I feel, my heart is like a wheel, let me roll it to you. McCartney had lifted the phrase, let me roll it to you, from George Harrison and Bob Dylan's song and expanded the concept a little bit. What they were rolling was a wheel, the wheel of friendship. And at the time Noel Gallagher was writing Roll It Over, he would have been 100% aware of the Beatles' connection and the significance of that phrase. So when he said, roll it, in his song, I think he had the same concept in mind, trying to put a relationship back together. Let's look at the first line. I can give a hundred million reasons to build a barricade. Although this is only my personal interpretation, it looks like this whole song was written about and to a particular person. Things are not going well between Noel and this person, and he is battling the temptation 
to shut them out of his life, to move on without them, to build a barricade and not let them back in. In an interview with Oasis biographer Paolo Hewitt, Noel's mum, Peggy Gallagher, confirmed that Noel was the type of person to frequently cut ties with anyone he fell out with and move on pretty quickly. Saying, Noel won't forgive and forget. If you cross him, then that's it. And I'm like that as well. There are numerous stories down through Oasis history of Noel having a fallout with a member of another band or a member of the crew or even a member of his own band and then cutting them out of his life and pretty much never speaking to them again. And yet, in the opening line of Roll It Over, Noel says he has countless reasons to build a barricade against this person he's singing about, but he hasn't done it yet. In this opening line, you can hear Noel's reluctance. The person he's singing about in Roll It Over must have been someone very close and very special to him. He's fighting to save the relationship. Let's look at the next line. I blame it on the changing of the seasons, the thoughts that I've conveyed. Now this really is a fascinating line. Things have gone wrong between Noel and this person and he's trying to figure out why. And it's really interesting that of the two possible reasons he gives, neither one actually blames this other person. He says perhaps this has happened simply because of the changing of the seasons, meaning the passage of time. Perhaps the breakdown of this relationship is just a natural thing and that we've grown apart as time has gone by. Or perhaps it's because of the thoughts that I've conveyed. Maybe it was something he said. He wonders if he's just done too much damage with too much careless talk. At the time when this song was being written in the late 90s, Noel was only just coming down from his most confrontational and controversial three-year era, 95 to 97, where he would pretty much say absolutely anything to kick up a storm in the press. I don't care what people think about me. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you what, I don't care what people think about me. I've got one of them, all right? And you f***ing haven't. So there. I mean, just get a close-up of that, and if, if you sad f***ers out there have never seen one of these, which you probably haven't, that's a Platinum Express, American Express card. That can buy you the aeroplanes that we get thrown off. Remember, Noel is the man who wrote My Big Mouth. He knew he had a habit of saying things that got him into trouble, and it sounds like that wasn't just a performance for the press. It sounds like it might have been a habit that actually also hurt his personal relationships. Now let's look at the chorus. Does it make it all right? It doesn't make it all right to roll it over my soul and leave me here. Having just talked about the possible reasons for why him and this person have drifted apart, he says, whatever the reason, whatever it is, it doesn't make it okay to treat me this way. He's deeply unhappy about the whole situation. He doesn't want this relationship to fall apart for any reason. It doesn't make it all right to roll it over my soul. To roll what over his soul? It's that wheel from the Paul McCartney song. Do you remember that line? My heart is like a wheel. Let me roll it. Let me roll it to you. When McCartney sang it, he was trying to mend the relationship between him and John Lennon. And in the Oasis song, it sounds like Noel Gallagher has done the same thing. He's reached out to someone to try and mend that relationship, but they have responded by rolling the wheel over his soul. They've run him over in response and left him for dead. Let's go on now to the second verse. Look around at all the plastic people who live without a care. So here we get another clue as to who this person might have been and how close they were to Noel being right in his inner circle. Having been super famous for years by this point, Noel lived a life that not very many people could have truly related to. Everywhere he went, he was recognised. Everywhere he went, people wanted something from him. There would have been very few people with whom he could truly relax, be natural and just be himself in that kind of chilled out family setting. 
The other day, I had a look at Liam Gallagher and Bonehead's Twitter feed, and it's amazing, even now, 25 years after the Britpop heyday, those guys are still bombarded with people asking them for things on a daily basis. So I just can't imagine what it would have been like for Noel in the 90s. And after many years of this, you can only imagine that the general public, the fans, the critics, and everyone in between will have kind of looked like a sea of plastic people to the guys in Oasis. Living carefree lives and knowing nothing of what's really going on in the real lives of their heroes below the exterior, under the surface. So why does Noel mention this in Roll It Over? Why does he refer to plastic people? I think he brings it up to make the point that the person he's singing to is not one of them. This person is someone really close to Noel. He knew them well, they were in his inner circle, and he was able to be himself around them. This was a rare and precious relationship for someone who was in that mega famous position. He wanted to save this relationship because it wasn't like all the others. That's why he's reluctant to build the barricade. He doesn't want to lose this person. The next line says, try to sit with me around my table, but never bring a chair. This line again shows that vulnerability that Noel very rarely expresses anywhere other than in his songs. And it backs up the sentiment of the previous line perfectly about all the plastic people. They might want to be seen with Noel, they might want the prestige of being associated with Noel, they might want something from him, but they don't want to actually sit down and get to know him. You get this image of people gathering around some kind of presidential table for a publicity shot, getting what they need in the can, and then immediately moving on. What Noel seems to actually be wanting here is to be able to sit down with someone at a table as equals, to eat a meal together, to just be a normal person. This person Noel is singing to here is someone who did bring a chair, someone who took an interest in Noel the human being rather than Noel the famous person. It's a fascinating thing the further I've got into being a YouTuber and the more people I've met kind of behind the scenes in the music industry, the more I've realised what it's like for famous musicians on the inside. After many years on end of just being constantly asked for things, famous musicians tend to get a little bit cynical and frustrated by it all and they tend to pull the walls up a bit. They tend to build a barricade. After a while, they tune people out they start wearing sunglasses in public specifically to stop people constantly trying to catch their eye. When they're walking through a crowd, they look straight ahead, they go directly where they're going, and they make a point of not engaging with anyone because if they do, they'll get press ganged into constant unnatural forced conversations. They often get treated like some monkey on display at the zoo, everyone waiting in line for their turn, and they usually find that experience absolutely exhausting. While the famous musicians enjoy all the adulation a little bit, mostly, deep down, what all of us want is to just be able to hang out with a group of friends as equals, and that's what I think this verse is talking about. Noel is talking to someone who was part of his intimate group of friends and he didn't want to lose. And that is the last line of lyrics, but not the final message of the song. In the instrumental section before the final chorus of this song, we have one more Little Beatles reference. It's the lead guitar line from Come Together. And I don't think this is in there by accident. I don't think Noel put such a recognisable lead line in that song just as a tribute to the Beatles, or because he couldn't think of anything else. I think it's in there because it's part of the message of the song. I think Noel was using this as a subtle way to be even more vulnerable and say, come back, come back together with me. Can't we make this right? I think this could be a secret hidden message in this song, which was intentionally put in there for that exact reason. And now the final big question is, who is this song actually about? 
I thought long and hard about this, and for a while I thought perhaps it was written about Bonehead and Gwigsy, who left the band during the recording sessions for this album. They had all been together pretty much from the start, they'd all shared the same experiences, they very much were all sat at that same table. But then I discovered this scan of a demo from 1998, which shows that the song was written before Bonehead and Gwigsy left the band, so I'm assuming it wasn't about them. There were several other members of the Oasis entourage who kind of parted company with Noel at this time. There was Brian Cannon, there was Owen Morris, but both of them remain on good terms with Noel to this day. And then it occurred to me, Noel Gallagher split up from his then wife, Meg Matthews, in 2001. He met his current wife, Sarah, in the year 2000, when this song came out. So it's quite possible that this song reflects a time in Noel's life when his marriage was breaking down with Meg Matthews. This is just my interpretation, and because there's not a lot of behind-the-scenes information from this period, I could be way off. Do you agree with my interpretation, or do you have a different interpretation? Let me know in the comments below, and as always, I'll see you next time.